In this tutorial, we'll show you how to download and import data to create a terrain in City Engine. If you don't have aerial imagery or elevation data already, I'll walk you through an example of how to find these data here in the United States. If you're based in another country, I encourage you to check your government or city GIS portal for similar data sets. In the United States, we have the USGS, which is the United States Geological Survey and they have a lot of open source data we can use. It's a great place to find both imagery and elevation data. So let's start here at the USGS map viewer. I'm interested in Redlands, California. So I'll type Redlands here in the search, press search, and then zoom to Redlands, California. The project will be located in downtown Redlands. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer here to the project area. And I can change the base map to imagery and topo as well to get a look at the kind of imagery I can download. And then I'll choose to download data. I'll click here to download using the current map extent. I'll select ortho imagery and click next. And I'm gonna take the second option, which is the most recent imagery. I get a checkout cart here, and if I choose add more, I can go here and select the elevation data. I'll choose the second option, which is the highest resolution elevation data available for this area, and click next. Now I'm ready to check out. I type in my email address, and then choose to place the order. And I get some information telling me that the data has been emailed to me for download. Once you receive the email, click on the highlighted link to download the data to your downloads folder. Once the data is downloaded, we'll preview it in ArcMap. To prepare the data in ArcMap for City Engine, first we'll extract all of the files we downloaded. You can extract multiple files at once with a program like Bitstop. So here I'll right click and choose extract to other and then navigate to my C drive where I can create a new folder called Redlands. And now I'll click OK. So now the files are extracting to that folder. When they're done, I'll click close. To view the files in ArcMap, first we need to make a connection to the project folder we just created. To do this in the catalog window, click the connect to folder button and then navigate to the folder we created on the C drive. Once you locate the folder, select it and click OK. Now the folder should appear in your folder connections in the catalog window. To expand the folder, click on the plus sign. And now you can see we have access to all of the data we just downloaded. Our next step will be to add each of the images to the data frame so we can view them. And then we'll click them to an area of interest and save the output in a format that we can take into City Engine. So in our catalog, I'll hold down the control key, select the images and drag and drop them into the data frame. Once all the images are loaded, we can see the full extent that the imagery covers. The project will be focused in downtown Redland, so I'll just zoom in here a little closer. Next, we need to create an area of interest polygon to clip the imagery to. For this, I'll use the draw toolbar. If you need to add the toolbar, you can right click in any of the gray space above the map and choose the draw toolbar from the context menu. Select the rectangle tool from the draw toolbar and sketch a rectangle around the area of interest. From the draw toolbar, select convert graphics to features. So here I'm going to specify the coordinate system be the same as the data frame and then specify the output of the feature class. For this project, we're going to create a new file geodatabase. So I'll click on new file geodatabase here 
and I'll call this red lens underscore 3D. Double click on the database to open it and call the output feature class AOI. Then click save. I'm going to check to automatically delete the graphics after completion and check OK. And then I'll say yes to adding the feature to the table of contents. Next, let's change the symbology so we can see the aerial imagery underneath the polygon. So if I click on the yellow polygon under the AOI layer in the table of contents, I open the symbol selector. And here I can adjust the symbology so we can see the aerial imagery underneath. Next, we'll use the geoprocessing tool to both mosaic the images together and clip them to our area of interest. Open the search window and type in mosaic to new raster. I'll select the first option here and then just drag and drop all of the rasters from the table of contents. I'll specify an output location, which will be our Redlands folder, and then I'll give the data set a name. So in this case, I'll call it Arial.tiff. And for this tool, you have to specify the extension that you're going to use for the raster. For the spatial reference, I'll use its native coordinate system, and then I'll leave the pixel type as 8-bit. I'll specify the number of bands as three because the original is a three band RGB image. Next, click on the tools environment settings. For output coordinate system, I'll hit the search button and type in the well-known ID of the coordinate system I'm looking for. In this case, 2229. Click search and the NAD1983 state plane coordinate system appears in the search results. I'll click OK. In the processing extent, I'll set it to be the same as the area of interest layer and click OK. And click OK again and let the tool run. Once the tool's finished running, let's go to the table of contents and look at the results. If I hold down the control key and press the checkbox in one of the layers, I can turn all the layers off. And now if I turn on just the area of interest and the aerial TIFF, we can see it's being clipped perfectly to the area of interest polygon. Now we need to do something similar to the elevation data set we downloaded. From our catalog, drag and drop the elevation data set into the map window. To clip the elevation data set, we'll use the raster calculator from the Spatial Analyst toolbox. Double click the tool to open it and then double click the elevation layer. Specify the output location as the Redlands folder and we'll call this one DEM.IMG and click save. For this tool's environment settings, set the processing extent to be the area of interest and the output coordinate system to be the same as the elevation layer. When we're finished, click OK and we'll let the tool run. Open the table of contents to examine the results. If we turn off the original elevation data set, we can see that the DEM and the aerial image line up perfectly with our area of interest. Depending on your computing power, you may want to change the size of the image a recommendation is to keep aerial images and DEMs to around 4000 by 4000. If you want to do this, we can go ahead and export the data again. And in the export, you can specify the raster size. So here we'll change this to 4000 and navigate to our Redlands folder. We'll specify that this is going to be a TIFF file again. And in this case, we'll call it Arial 4000. and then I'll click Save. Once we've processed the imagery, it's ready to import into City Engine. So let's go back to City Engine. Once we're in City Engine, we can copy and paste 
the aerial imagery and the DEMs that we process directly from our Redlands project folder into our City Engine workspace. Once the Arial and DEM are copied into our project folder, we can drag and drop the DEM and the Arial into the viewport to create a terrain. So for the texture file, I'll choose Arial and click Finish. Here you can see we now have a terrain map layer in City Engine. We just went over the basics of processing terrain and imagery from open source datasets using ArcGIS for desktop. If you have access to other image editing software like Photoshop for example, you can also clip the rasters in there as well. So now that we have the terrain and the context for the scene, in the next video we'll look at importing street networks.